The Storm Collectibles Baki line is easily one of my favorite action figure lines. They are beautifully done figures, they have phenomenal sculpts, and they have great posability. And I mean, look at them, straight up peak. After Yujiro release, we were all wondering what was going to happen next with the Spocky line, and then Storm Collectibles surprised us with something none of us saw coming. A battle damage Baki. Man, I got so hyped when I saw this, I literally about shit myself in class when I seen it. Like, he looks so damn good. And also, we saw that he comes with a puking blood head. Like, what? That's so cool. And before some of y'all go crazy and say, why does the third figure have to be Baki? Well, this one doesn't count as it's an event exclusive. Plus, at the same event this figure was sold at, they revealed that Dopa Rochi will be the next figure in the Baki line. So that's cool. Wasn't expecting him of all people, but I'm a still cop. But anyways, after seeing how peak this figure is, I had to know how I could purchase it. And this was where disaster struck. He's an event exclusive figure for this anime expo thing in Hong Kong. So that means he's not a regular release for the public and we will have to go to this event to cop. Well, I don't live in Hong Kong, so it's going to be difficult for me to get it. Luckily for us, the Baki went on sale at the event. It was at almost immediately after it was announced. People from that area wasted no time getting him and then put him up for sale. Yep, that price, man. It's killer because I think the fig is like $80 at the event, but I wanted this figure so damn bad, so I had to break the bank. And now he's here. And I'm really excited to get this guy open, so let's go ahead and get this review going. Baki's box is really clean. It's done in a style that the first two figures have, where it's a blurred area crowd for the box. Instead of having the art of what this figure is based off of on the front and the sides, they use an actual image of the figure. The front of the box also showcases the figure inside. The top of the box has the Baki logo. Both sides of the box have the same image of the figure. The back of the box showcases the figure and some of the poses you can put him in, as well as some of his accessories. This box is really cool, but I can't stand having this dude trapped in a box and not in my hands. So let's get the review of this glorious masterpiece of a figure Start. This figure right here is so amazing. I expected this figure to be goaded, but damn, I did not know he was going to be even better in hand. He looks phenomenal. This figure has the same ripped and muscular body as the original Baki, but this time they gave him battle damage detailing. They did such a great job with the battle damage. Everywhere on his body has some form of battle damage. From head to toe, it literally looks like someone's been beating the shit out of him. Like, bro got battle damage on his dogs. I really love the blood, as it really brings the battle damage to life. The scrapes are cool, but a scrape ain't shit without some blood. The blood looks like it was splattered on the fig, and it looks really good. I really like how they included the blood splattering and battle damage on his knees and elbows. Looking back at the promos, the blood looks like it landed in a different area, so I wonder if everyone's Baki has different blood splattering. Now, the only place this figure doesn't have battle damage is his cheeks. So no battle damage cheeks. Also, this Baki just looks a little bit more slender than the first Baki. I think this is because of the upper diaphragm area seems to sit higher. Now, let's address his shorts. I know some of y'all are curious as to why they are fully red with no white waistband. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know why they're fully red. It could be like that because the white from his shorts is now fully covered in blood, or there's something else that this is based off of. Y'all let me know what y'all think. But I still really love how they look. Also, they fit better than the pair that the normal Baki comes with, and they help make his waist look smaller. Plus, no white waistband that gets dirty and nasty. This figure then feels really good. Like, he feels way better than the first release of Baki. His joints feel a little bit tighter than the first, and he poses better than the first figure. For the overall look and feel of this figure, it's great. Like, he looks so damn beautiful. The battle damage is done so damn good and is done right. This right here is how you do it. So now, let's check out this masterpiece's accessories. Baki comes with a decent amount of accessories. First, he comes with four beautiful, and I mean four beautiful, interchangeable heads. The first head is like a neutral, defeated, shock face. This head is done so damn well. You can see a swollen eye has bruises and painted around it, as well as blood dripping from his mouth, and can even see some scratches and other bruising on his cheeks and jaw area. The next face is my favorite face that Baki comes with. This face is what I call the lock-in serious face. Baki's eyes are all white and his teeth are clenched with some blood dripping from his mouth. The colors on this face though doesn't match with the body as the face is a little bit more tan than the body. It's definitely pretty noticeable in person, but the face still looks sick as fuck. The next face Baki comes with is a yelling face. This face reminds me of when he was yelling at Pickle. It's beautifully done and you can see the scrapes of blood on his face. He even got some blood on his ears. His mouth is detailed really well as his teeth and tongue are sculpted and painted cleanly. I think this yelling face is really good and a lot of people might prefer this one over the one that the original Baki comes with but I both love them as they are both accurate to me. Lastly for heads, Baki comes with a spitting up blood face. Now this face right here is so freaking badass. This is easily one of the most unique head sculpts I've ever gotten with a figure. 
The blood coming out is a soft, transparent red plastic and is attached to the inside of his mouth and cannot be removed. The eyes on his face are fully whited out and you can see some scrapes as well. This head really makes the figure so much more fun because now I can have Yujiro beat the fuck out of him and he can then spit up some blood. For the heads, every single one of them is so badass and adds uniqueness to this figure. Baki then comes with five interchangeable hands. He comes with two fisted hands, two fighting stance hands, two open relaxed hands, two grappling hands, and two open hands that have a little bit more expression to them. All the hands have battle damage into them, which is really cool that they included the blood and scrape lines. All the hands are extra badass with this detailing. And the last accessory Baki comes with is two extra wrist pegs. And that's it for accessories. Pretty much the same amount as the first release, but it kind of feels like we got more just because of the spitting up bloodhead. But the accessories all satisfy me as they'll help make this badass figure even more badass. Like all the head sculpts were made with love and passion. So now, let's look at Baki's articulation. You might think that since this is the same body as the first release, that the articulation is the same. Well, sort of, but they did make some improvements in a few areas. Baki's head can look up a good bit and a good bit down. Then the head can tilt side to side really well. Baki's good head movement is thanks to this neck area as the entire torso is rubber and the double ball peg that connects Baki's head to the neck area works really well. His shoulders go up this far, he has a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows that bend past 90 degrees, and good wrist movement. His butterfly joint can go this far forwards and then can go this far backwards. I mentioned earlier that they improved articulation in some areas and here is an area that they improved on. His upper diaphragm articulation is a lot better on this guy. It just moves so much more fluidly and gets more range. I think it's because the upper diaphragm on this guy sits higher than the first Baki pig. His waist then moves really well. The legs on this figure can go up really high, but mine isn't broken yet, so the squeaks are hurting my soul. There is rotation at the upper thigh area. His legs, despite how muscly his thighs and calves are, get a great amount of knee flexion. Then the other area where they prove that with this figure is his ankle articulation. On the first release, especially right out of the box, ankle articulation was really stiff, which made it ass. But with this guy, it's not as stiff, we can actually move his ankles right out of the packaging. And lastly for articulation, Baki got a big ass toe joint. Overall, this is the best articulated Baki figure now. He can pose really well, can get into some cool poses. Now, I wish he could pose like a Rebel Taker SHF, so we could do some even more crazy poses, but for what he can do, it's good. So now, let's see how Baki looks compared to some other figures. First here is Battle Damage Baki, next to Normal Baki. Here you can see that the body is the same, but this Battle Damage Baki honestly outshines the original. If you took all the Battle Damage off this figure, I think it would look better than the first. Also, since they are the same body, you could interchange the parts between each figure. Like if you wanted Baki just have some bloody fists, you could put the Battle Damage hands onto the normal one. Or, if you just wanted a Battle Damage heads on the normal Baki, you could do that as well, and vice versa. This would definitely make posing even more fun. Next, here he is next to Storm Collectibles Usual Hama. This battle damage Baki really goes well this huge row. Nothing like a father beating the shit out of his son. Here's Baki next to the Storm Collectibles King and Ashura figures. I am very excited for this crossover coming out soon. Here he is next to Demonical Fit Goku. And lastly, here he is next to SHF Gear 5 Luffy. This figure is a masterpiece. I knew this figure was going to be as good as the first, but I didn't know he was going to be better. The overall feel and look is just so damn good. The battle damage all throughout this figure is beautifully done. It really makes this figure highly unique in my collection. This is a true battle damage figure. The blood is very essential to the look of this figure and it was executed perfectly. All the heads that he comes with are such excellent pieces and the spitting up blood head is very sick. Then the improvements they made with this figure's torso and ankle articulation was also a very nice surprise. They made the best Baki figure ever even better. Now, I've seen some comments wondering what this look is based off of. I just think it's based off of multiple points in the series where he is battle damage combined into one look. But, if y'all have any ideas on the inspiration, y'all let me know. I still can't believe that this figure was just announced and we have him in our hands. Just in time for the King and Baki collab. And with Dopa being the next figure in the Baki line, we got us a long ass wait till the next Baki figure comes out, since they haven't even shown us his prototype. Unless we get an event exclusive Battle Damage Ujiro, damn, just saying that got me almost shit myself. That'd be so amazing. But to include this figure, this figure is amazing. I got mine on eBay for $170, and yeah, I know, $170 ain't cheap. But I had to have this guy. So if y'all want him, then eBay is y'all's best bet. Or y'all could find a hookup from someone who is from Hong Kong. But if y'all are a Baki enthusiast, then you would definitely need this piece in your collection. We are done with this review, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Y'all let me know. What are y'all's thoughts about this figure? I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.